the problem we're looking at is uh, the problem of aflatoxin contamination in maize flour. And the problem is that when consumers purchase maize flour, they have no way to distinguish between maize flour that's contaminated and flour that's not contaminated. So what we're trying to do is work with millers so that they can test their products for aflatoxins and then they can sell their products and market their products as being tested for aflatoxin. So almost everybody in Kenya eats maize almost every day of their life and so it's a, it's a very important source of exposure. The informal market in Kenya is still much larger than the formal market. So the formal market would be branded packaged flour that you buy in a shop or supermarket. But most Kenyans still buy their maize in the form of whole grains that they then take to a small mill to have milled. Uh, so that market is going to be much more difficult to regulate and to test for these aflatoxins. At really high doses, it will kill you and it does kill people in Kenya every few years. There's an outbreak that kills dozens of people. More commonly, and the, the larger problem really from a health perspective, is that it's in the food supply at low doses, and that causes cancer. So that's a, you know, a long-term problem. People won't notice that contamination immediately. And it also causes children not to grow properly. This was something Vivian and I had talked about a couple years ago. And she had a research assistant who did uh, some work on uh, aflatoxin and willingness to pay among consumers, so what the consumer demand was for this. Then I got a little money from my university to do some more pilot work on basically willingness to pay among consumers for aflatoxin tested maize. But the problem with those studies is that they weren't in true marketing conditions. We were just asking them whether they'd be willing to pay. It was a little bit artificial, uh, so we wanted to really show that if you had an aflatoxin-tested product on the shelf next to a non-aflatoxin-tested product, that consumers would be interested in purchasing that. So we worked with one miller in Kenya, Osho Grain Millers, and they've been great. They subjected their product to third-party independent testing for aflatoxin and kept logs of that, and were, we were able to put a logo on their packaging indicating that it had been tested by this third party. And so, you know, they, that allowed us to do the project. So that's the only one that was involved in this present study, but there are other millers that we will be working with in the future who are also interested maybe in labeling, but at least in testing and, and working with farmers to shorten the chain of you know, how many hands the maize passes through going from the farm to the mill, which will allow the farmers to get the incentive for higher quality, safer food directly. And hopefully that'll then also affect farmers' investment in food safety. If these innovations are successful, I think people in the developing world will have access to safer food. So they will be able to do what we do in the US, which is go to the store and buy food and not worry too much about whether or not it's contaminated uh, with potentially toxic fungus. We need farmers to take actions and the, the way that we have seen from our research that farmers will take action is through market incentives that reward safer food. So we're testing whether we can kind of affect people's decisions at every point in this value chain. Um, and if we can, then I think we can, we can come a long way toward improving food safety in the developing world.